I would like to see it myself. Um, but but yeah, maybe yeah. I was surprised. Yeah, is, is it a? And now we're talking about the the the, the Scarbow design. Is, is that particular boat is is that a carbon boat? Or I, I guess it, it it needs to have certain requirements that it can't be too light and too uh, something. It, it's no, sim- wait, it's, wait, it's, wait, with this kind of boat, weight is everything. Uh, so when you go for so basically with boats, as you know, it's either you you increase the power or you minimize drag. This is normally one going against another. So uh, so. That, that's your trade-off uh, you have to decide on when you're designing a boat. So are you going to make a boat with a lot of power or are you going to have a boat with less, very little drag? Yeah. And uh, as long as you are doing the BMG boats, uh, so boats which are built to go uh, especially upwind, drag is a, is, is a main thing. Uh, so it's very important, obviously, because you're going against the wind so, uh, and against the waves. So to minimize drag is extremely important. So your balance point is somewhere, let's say on extreme, would say TT52 would be a best example of a balance point for a BMG boat. So a little bit wider, yes, but quite narrow on the waterline and uh, and with you know everything hidden below decks, uh, very clean uh, rig. So it's anything which creates drag is is, uh, is basically killing you. Yeah. Um, and then and then so this is for BMG and then when you doing a BMC boat, so a boat which is predominantly made for reaching, uh, any kind of reaching, right, from 60 degrees through to 140 degrees through. Um, these boats are not so, of course, you're still trying to minimize drag, but it is way more important to have power, to have stability. Yeah. And therefore, the equation is solved a bit differently than with a BMG boat, and that means that you sacrifice a little bit of of, uh, of stability of, of drag, uh, you increase a little bit the drag, but you get a lot more stability and power. And that means that you go to hull shapes, which are of course very draggy. And then the only way this is working all round, so that you don't have a one trick pony, so that you don't have a boat which is amazing in reaching, but but then completely sucks in windward lures, is that the boat is light. Um, so that's the only way that you actually can solve this equation with an all-round boat with extended performance in reaching, let's call it like that. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the trick. So that's, that's the, the answer, a bit longer one to your question. So if you go for a, for a boat like that, it has to be extremely light. Um, so it's not something you don't, you don't I mean, we, we shouldn't expect normal boats to look like that anytime soon. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, th- I think a, a lot of people who like the... Uh... Aesthetics of the sailing, I uh, appreciate that because I think people think that that the that the scow is uh, is kind of ugly design, but somehow it looks uh, efficient though. I mean, it. it yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, the trick is for cruising. It would be great to have a to have a, basically you know, a front cabin which is huge and stuff like that. Yeah. But in terms of a sailing boat as a machine, so you can still do it. I mean, cruising boats as you now use chines and very wide water lines. Which makes them, of course, extremely slow, but uh, but they very voluminous. So they use basically a visual aspect of a race boat, but misuse it, <laughs> and then you know use it as a marketing tool to convince people, ah, this looks fast, but it's actually <laughs> slower and adds volume. Yeah. And I think the same thing is, is would be a voluminous bow, so uh, either a scow or just a lot of volume in the bow. So for a boat which is slow and displacement. Um, and it just, it's great for increasing the comfort and the volume inside, but it has nothing to do with performance. So mm-hmm. if you are, you know, like open 60s, they have very, very voluminous bows as well, as much as they can up, up, uh, according to the rule. Uh, but come on, it's an open 60, which 60 foot boat, which weighs eight tons. You mm-hmm. know, they can, uh, and also there is one funny aspect of these very fat bows, which you can see on the scow um, and on the Pogo 3, for example. You know, in the old days, uh, the boats were trimmed that the bow was in the water, but the stern was a little bit out of the water. So the water line was, in fact, shorter because of the ratings, especially. Yeah. Uh, and now with the scows, this is exactly the opposite. So basically, with the Pogo 3, the stern is submerged underwater, but the first 50 or 70 centimeters of bow is actually uh, sticking up. All right. Yeah. Are you there? 
হ্যাঁ